welcome! I'm Jade of Jaded Reader and today I'm going to be doing some writing. I talked about in my last vlog how I wanted to kind of explore my writing on my channel a little bit more. I have already explored my writing in a really big way off of my channel, but the more I was talking about it, the more I grew excited about it. Overall, I just, I want to give this a shot. So that is what we are doing today. I'm not going to be reading today. I'm not going to be talking about books unless it's my own. It should be a very interesting experiment as I've never done a video like this before, but I am hoping that it works out and goes well. If it doesn't, I did get something out of this video. I am actually doing this video in collaboration with Ana Luisa. If you recognize that name, it's because I have worked with them before and they reached out to me again, which I was thrilled at. I thought that that was a one hit wonder where I was going to get to work with them, but they actually contacted me again for some reason. I am again working with Ana Luisa in this video. I admittedly, the moment that the items came in the mail, ripped them open and just tried them on. So I am already wearing two of the three pieces that I had requested. I was really nervous to be ordering rings specifically offline as I do have kind of like pudgy little fingers. <laughs> I don't know another way of putting it. It's what they are. So nothing wrong with that except for when I'm trying on rings. And so I had to guess my size. I am legally married, but I don't have a ring. So you might have seen in past videos me with like a little plastic ring and that was just my partner and I's way of being like, look, see, we did the thing. But when Anna Luisa reached out this time, I thought maybe I should get something that like kind of looks legit. And oh my gosh, it looks legit. And I love this ring. It's perfect for me because it's not a daunting size. It doesn't feel like I am wearing a massive stone on my finger or anything like that. The ring that I chose is called Paisley and despite it having the gold coloring. It's actually sterling silver, not just regular sterling silver, but 100% recycled sterling silver, which is the exact kind of silver I feel comfortable working with if I was going to work with a company. And because they are carbon neutral and has completely demolished their carbon footprint, I feel comfortable working with them. And right in the middle, instead of having a diamond, which is not really my thing, if I'm being perfectly honest, we have white topaz, which is much more my thing. That is way more my style and everyone has their own jewelry choices and preferences. I feel like when I was searching for what I wanted, they had it and it seemed like they had a wide range of other items that while they wouldn't be for me, they might be for someone else. The necklace, however, is one of the most me things I could have found. It's a star necklace. It's so small and light. I forget that I'm wearing it. And this necklace, which I believe is Gabby, comes with opal in the middle, which is one of my all-time favorite stones. Moon stones and opals, you can get me with a moonstone and opal any day. Like hands down, my go-to stone. Then finally, on the topic of things that are out of my comfort zone that Ana Luisa has, there are earrings. I am not much of an earring wearer and I thought I would try something new. So I got these earrings. They are the Elise earrings and they fit really well with the other two pieces that I chose. So it just seemed to make sense for me. I was like kind of going out of my comfort zone, taking a leap of jewelry face and when they arrived and they were not like beastly large or intimidating, I was relieved. <laughs> Funnily enough, um, while they are outside of my comfort zone, they are right in my mother-in-law's comfort zone. And when I sent her, as well as several other people, a message to show that I had gotten new jewelry and wanted to show it to them, my mother-in-law absolutely fell in love with the earrings. And as of filming this, her birthday is right around the corner. So I believe she has officially laid claim to my earrings. I don't think I'll be getting to keep those, but they are really, really nice. And they do go with a lot of things, which just, goes to show that they're a great gift for your mother-in-law or anyone else you have in your life, which is great because their pieces start at $39 and with their summer sale that goes all the way through the 20th, I will have my Jaded Reader link down below so that you can go ahead and see if any of these might be for you or your style or for your mother-in-law if that's the case for you as well. And hopefully you can find something that you are looking for. But now on to the actual writing portion of this video, I thought I would talk a little bit about my writing process, what I am writing, and just a better understanding of what I am doing with writing and my story. I would like to also open this up as a discussion of like what you are doing. So first off, I don't dress like this when I am writing. I, I could never actually write like this. I wanted to look nice for the video and for talking to you guys. But if we're getting down to writing, I not only will not be wearing this, 
but I actually barely wear much of anything at all. I usually wear a t-shirt, I go no bra, no pants, which is why I have a nice blanket here. I have to not write naked because that seems like an extreme, but I do need to just feel completely uninhibited. I don't usually write with music, though I'm not going to write it off. I've had a couple discussions lately about ASMR and I do want to give that a shot, but not in this video. This video, I just kind of want to stay in my comfort zone while also talking to you. I have my laptop here, which is where I do all of my writing. I usually have my hair tossed back and I just focus in, just no distractions, no anything, which is why the camera is new. The camera is new because I can't help but know the camera is there and we're just gonna see how that goes. The other thing I do while I'm writing is not talk. I cannot talk and write. If you can talk and write, please leave a link to your video below. I would love to learn how you do that because I will actually just be writing, but I still want to kind of explain my writing process to you. I'll be going into voiceover mode, so let's get that fanciness started. Here is voiceover Jade, and I'm gonna say bye until the end of this video. Okay, right off the bat, I need to acknowledge this because it pretty much comes up anytime me and my computer are in the same shot and I am using my computer, so let me get this out of the way right now. Uh, yes, I only type with one hand. It's not really the pecking method, but some sort of weird hybrid. So my right hand naturally rests where it would if I was to use two hands, and then my left hand just kind of drops off and supplies me with coffee and or tea. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's weird and we both know it. So just wanted to acknowledge that and moving on. I guess one of the first major things I should probably talk about if I'm going to introduce my writing is what I am writing. Um, and the genre of what I'm writing. So uh, to sum it up like really, really broadly, it's definitely fantasy. I have a world that is completely made up by me um, and uh, I love it very much. I love being there, uh, to be perfectly honest. It is really easy to immerse into this world. I don't really have a problem going into it at all and just like knowing it really well. It has magic, it has different climates and cultures and yeah, I just really like being there. But ultimately it's a fantasy. I don't know the exact age range of my fantasy. I know that my characters are between the ages of 18 and 22. And then there are also characters in their late 30s uh, and so on and so forth. So I, I would say that all the characters besides the very beginning of the book are adults, but I don't know if it goes into the upper young adult or the new adult or just the adult. I just pretty much know it's not a middle grade. So <laughs> that's what I'm working with there. As far as the world itself, without giving out too much information, uh, there are three different cultures and they don't always get along and they all have different magic systems. I would say my magic systems are fairly simple uh, and I draw from ideas such as mindfulness, animism, and overall just my own spirituality and twist on how I shape reality. And the world itself is a queer normative world, so I don't know if that is the exact phrasing I want to use, but I'm going to use it now because it's my best description off the cuff. The world has queer characters, they exist, and it it's not unusual for them. They, they aren't characters where they have to hide it. It's just a known fact. I have non-binary characters, just non-gender conforming characters in general. To sum it up, there is plenty of queer activity happening in my world. And while it's not the main center or main focus, I like that it's just there. I love reading books where it is a main focus or it's being talked about. But when writing my book, I realized I didn't want to make it a focus. Uh, I have to focus on it so much in just daily life that it just, it's nice to go into a world that that isn't an issue, that it's not something that has to be stressed over by my characters. My characters have plenty of other stressors that they have to worry about. That's not to say that they don't uh, have curiosities or don't always understand each other or anything like that, uh, especially when it comes to different sexualities. Like there is confusion, there's misunderstandings, but it's just not the main focus and I like that. But uh, yeah, overall, a lot of fantasy, queer normative, and uh, we're following a cast of characters that I really enjoy, which makes the experience of writing about them all the more enjoyable, which is essentially why I'm still writing and why I'm even bothering with this. I can say I have written on and off throughout my life and it's never quite felt like this before. I haven't had this chemistry and connection with characters before. I don't know if I would just write 
without them. So that'll be something to look into later. But for now, uh, that's the genre in the most rambly way humanly possible. I guess for technical stuff, I would say I'm writing this in third person close, which means we follow the characters in third person where it's main character did this and then she did that. <laughs> While getting a strong idea of their personalities and perspectives because we're following that character closely. So the, in the narrative, you get a little bit of their personality, which is nice. I'm not sure if this is the method I prefer to write in. It's just how the story naturally came about. I have found that not fighting it is the best way to go when dealing with these characters in this story. I changed locations quite a bit, so I'm sorry if that's jarring to you, um, but it is like a really important part of my writing style um, is that I, like I said before, I just like to be uninhibited and sometimes I need to switch locations. Sometimes I need to be outside or inside or somewhere entirely different. The main thing is just noise. I can take just about anything but other people speaking. My dyslexia is the major part of that, so no cafes for me, but quiet, dingy, uh, dusty libraries are perfectly good, as well as outside nature and the living room when nobody is home. I think I would say I'm a pantser, as I had characters before I had a world or plot, and found myself reading the story for the first time as I was writing it, which was jarring because I was writing it. I just wanted to see what would happen happened next and was really connected to these characters, like I had said before. When they got through something too easily and I was an unsatisfied reader, I wrote something from my antagonist perspective to create a few more obstacles to throw in their way. So yeah, it's been really interesting writing my main character because she's pretty different from myself. There is a cast of characters, but the, the main the main main character kind of is really good at dodging obstacles. So my antagonist and I had to be pretty creative in ruining her life. So that was an enjoyable part of the process, not gonna lie. I would say that been the main thing where, which makes me think I'm a pantser is I, I didn't know what this was until I really started writing it and I really understood like what the stakes were and pretty much was the entire first book of me not knowing what the heck was going on until I got to the end, which is when I realized that this was not a standalone, which is unfortunate because I understand that those usually are more easily sold and marketed, but that's not really why I'm here. Different video, different day. Essentially, I started on book two and three. I realized it wasn't naturally over based off of these characters and their own ambitions. Nothing could stay how it was, so I had to keep going. And in doing that, I decided I wasn't going to just pants it all out. But instead, uh, book two and three, I ended up loosely drafting it. I had a huge breakthrough moment with one of my antagonists, and once that happened, I wrote my ending and gave myself beats to hit uh, with the freedom of getting there however I wanted. So the end of my book is figured out, and then I have sentence to paragraph length beats to hit throughout that. That's part of what I've been writing right now. Those little tidbits in between to get me to that ending and some of the things that I want to hit on as I get there. Otherwise, it's, yeah, it's pretty much just pantsing. It's me knowing the characters really well and having them interact and just guiding them. And if I have a hurdle that I have to cross in which they outsmart me, I just kind of have to rework it from there because otherwise I just, the creativity is just not there. <laughs> my favorite part of writing is sort of my favorite part of reading, I suppose. I like exploring and seeing what happens next, connecting with the characters and almost writing small fan fictions to better understand them. Um, I do a lot of writing that never ends up in my book. I have a deleted scenes section is what I call it, but they're not deleted because they were never there. I do a lot of things where I'll just toss them in random scenarios to get to know them better and it's really fun and really interesting. I, I liked figuring out what kind of lessons or themes were in my book because initially I was just writing a lot of, I guess, feelings. I don't know. Point being, I was enjoying the process a lot and the immersion part is definitely my favorite part of writing. It's the connection between me and reading and just having full control over not what really happens next because my character's personalities kind of determine a lot of that, but getting to go as deep as I want into each interaction and each bit of the world. I would say I write my best at night and edit my best in the morning. 
I'm really mean um, in the morning and I don't take Creative Jade's bullshit, which is really nice because, you know, Nighttime Jade, Creative me sometimes puts a lot of weird bullshit into her book. And I, as a uh, morning Jay, get to edit all of that out and figure out what exactly I'm doing to make it more concise. Though I have been told I am an underwriter, which is interesting because I always feel like I'm pretty rambly. In fact, like that's part of my platform is I ramble a lot. When I my first draft finished, it was 75,000 words and I was pretty much told immediately like <laughs> no <laughs> it needs to be longer. Um, now it's sitting at about I'd say 107 or 108. Yeah I, I'm, I'm an underwriter <laughs> which is weird uh, but I'm working on that and uh, a lot of my editing and revisions is like fleshing out a scene or going further in which is fantastic so I actually haven't minded the revision process because I'm finding areas that I can go deeper when otherwise I felt like maybe I shouldn't or someone wouldn't care. I have been told to push those areas, look further into it, add more description, and since it's all really vivid in my head, that has been an incredibly large amount of fun. I guess right now I don't have much of a writing community. I talk to myself and converse with my characters in my head. Wow, actually that sounds really alarming. I don't have another way of explaining that though, it's it's true. I feel like my writing community right now is uh, uh, me plus three because I have three major perspectives <laughs> um, in my book, which I don't think actually benefits me or my characters. So I'm trying to change that actually. Uh, recently, I reached out to Yumi. That is Yumi from Yumi the Book Demon and absolutely fantastic. You should definitely check out her channel. In asking Yumi to read some of her writing and she not only had several stellar projects she was working on and was nice enough to let me see one of them, but she asked if I I had any, which ultimately is what opened the floodgates and she pretty much saved my draft. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it wasn't that I'm a horrible writer, am or was a horrible writer, but I am a novice writer. I'm untried and I'm currently trying. And she had so many amazing writing tips and both creative and constructive. Her input was challenging for me and gave me and my writing a whole new dimension. It was like leveling up in a video game um, and getting like a god tier weapon. Suddenly I, it just made me want to write more and every interaction I've had with her has actually been very enriching. Like she has amazing amazing writing tips. I know that right now she's doing a readathon, so I don't know if she's doing any writing tips, but I highly recommend her channel as well as just recommending her as a human. <laughs> if you can recommend a human, I recommend Yumi uh, because she's fantastic and so is her writing. It's been a really interesting part of the process, which I guess is uh, where I am in the process right now. Um, I have a few close trusted people uh, with my writing, um, which is nerve wracking and nauseating despite them being close and trusted. Yumi being one of them and my partner and my mother and some friends. While I wait for the draft, I am just kind of continuing on my own with drafts for book two and three. Um, sometimes I hop around. If I make a breakthrough in one book, then I can go to the other and make sure that it all makes sense. But I, I have to say that it's, it's felt really good just having that one book completely down. But just because a draft is done doesn't mean I'm finished and I don't want to be yet. I want to keep going and challenging myself and inching myself out of my comfort zone ever so slightly so that my book can do the same. And yeah, I guess that's uh, part of this. I don't know what all content I'll make with my writing. Um, I kind of have to see how this goes first because this is definitely the test run, but I know that I would love to do some writing sprints um, just so that I'm interacting a little bit more with fellow writers. I also really love the idea of doing writing with me um, where I possibly write at night or do some writing vlogs, especially since I'm a night owl and I just kind of am up anyway. <laughs> Poor lighting aside, I think it would be a lot of fun. But uh, thank you for sticking around while I took my first inch out of my comfort zone as far as YouTube and writing went. And if you're writing something either for fun or to get it published or both, I'd love to hear about it. So yeah, let me know what you're writing, if you like to write, or if it's something you've been thinking about, if you're looking for like a push to get started, or if you had a push, what was that push? What got you to actually start writing. Let me know in the comments or don't let me know and uh, just I guess give it a like. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here but uh, we'll go ahead and switch over because she is out of coffee. She's definitely done for the day so let's go ahead and 
switch over and see what uh, me of the past has to say. Okay, so I feel like I have done enough writing for the time being. I'll actually probably pick this up later in the evening because like I said earlier, that is the majority of where I do my actual writing, like where I'm just getting in there and getting fresh new information for myself. Today, most of the time while I was writing, I was doing either revisions or edits or um, a couple dialogue things where I wanted to flesh out a conversation more or add more descriptions. So I was adding to my writing, but it was in a way that is a little bit more analytical is I guess what I would say. Yeah, at night, I'm usually in full creativity mode. I can write for hours on end, which was was great in quarantine, great while I was in a state of depression and shelled up, wondering when my life was going to press play instead of pause. So I do need to set timers for myself to eat, drink, and sleep because I have found that those are things that do not come to me naturally when I am fully immersed in this world. I am making sure they eat, drink, and sleep, but I do not. That has been a trial that I have had to combat with uh, timers. I will have a timer set, not really for making sure I write within that, amount of time but to make sure that I do take breaks and do all the things I'm meant to do as a functioning human being. <laughs> My most creative time unfortunately for writing when I feel like the most immersed ready to go can write just non-stop with those breaks that I set aside for myself is from around 8 p.m. at night to 5 a.m. the next morning. That is like my sweet spot for just getting the story out there. I have noticed a huge difference in like the shift of my creativity from that time versus when I am writing in the morning or when I just catch some extra writing time in. So those are the big story moments. Those are when I make my breakthroughs or have a better understanding or just am enjoying myself like at the most. Unfortunately, that's not an incredibly healthy or useful space and time for like waking up the next morning or communicating with other humans, that sort of thing. Yeah, I can't do it very often, but I do set aside like special weekends and stuff like that. So I might take a Saturday and decide I'm doing absolutely nothing on Sunday so that I can use that Saturday or Friday night and then do nothing the next day because I'll just sleep in and then I have to not do it anymore. So I get about one of those a week if I get one at all. And that is a self-inflicted rule. My partner and my family have been incredibly supportive and understanding of my weird writing schedule that I have created for myself. But I also know that it's not a very useful time to be able to speak and talk and interact with other human beings. So so I've tried to make some compromises with that. But like I said in hopefully my voiceover, I would love to know what you are doing with your writing. Are you writing? Are there certain weird quirks or ticks or things that you need to do while writing that other people might find unusual? I have the whole writing with one hand thing, but I actually have found people more distressed by me writing like on the ground outside than anything else. People will be like, how are you getting any writing done like on the floor and I'm like this is the only way to write this scene is on the floor. So yeah that's been a time. Uh, speaking of time I am going to take one of those scheduled breaks and go eat food. Call Soleil back because she has called me twice <laughs> since I started this video. Luckily I had it on do not disturb but I did sneak a peek when I was moving outside and saw that she had called twice. A quick reminder and thank you again to Ana Luisa for providing the jewelry and uh, doing this collaboration with me. I really love their pieces and the things that they are doing with their business. So if you are interested in checking them out, go ahead and again, I have that link down below and the summer sale that's going on until the 20th. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this. If you made it all the way through, extra appreciation. Good job. Awesome. And whether you enjoyed the video or not, I hope you are enjoying the sun or more stars wherever you are. And until next time, bye.